the coalition. Okay. Um, Aziz Ansari is now facing claims of sexual allegation of, you know, basically how it is told is it's borderline, it's kind of borderline rape. Um, there, there's a very lengthy uh, story that's told in very graphic detail about um, Anzari when he was around 18 years old, him going on this date, and it was basically one of the worst experiences of this young woman's life, and how throughout the date he was just trying to sleep with her and it goes into very graphic detail and as we all know the me too movement is out and they're trying to get anyone who is assumed to be a sexual assaulter so this is stirring up rumors that his netflix series master of none may end up being canceled and it just picked up um a couple awards so We'll have to wait and see how that's going to turn out. Also, there is two TV shows that are in the works. There is John Wick works right now, and it's going to feature Keanu Reeves. That's the big selling point of everything. So you're gonna just get, it's not gonna focus on Keanu Reeves, but he'll make like a, you know, like a special guest appearance until the show can survive without him. So, that's going to be um, headed up. Also, there is a Hitman TV series that's in the works as well. They recently came out of meetings and right now there isn't much detail about it, but it's going to focus on Hitman and his career and his origin. And it's gonna be very action-based, but I can say that the John Wick series is going to be produced by Hulu. And that can be, that's gonna come out if not 2019, 2020. So that's it for today. I, I did have uh, some quick comments about the the as the Azis uh, or Azis, however you pronounce it. I'm sorry. Izzy. Don't you mean Izzy? Um, Azis. Izzy. Izzy. No, Aziza. I'm sorry. I'm butchering it now. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. As for the Azis thing, like. I, like a lot of these allegations are going to continue to come out because we're talking about like, you know, 20, 30 years of history that people are digging into, you know, so this is going to continue to happen. Um, in his case, though, you know, this is fairly recent, it sounds. But like, I, I just want to kind of uh, throw out this question, you know, there's no right or wrong way to answer it. But like, is, is there a point where we should be separating um, like the art that people create from their actions. Because if we look at classic literature, like a lot of the classic books out there, you know, from a, a damn, what's that? A Lovecraft. Um, I can't remember his full name. Like he, he's got a lot of classic books, right? But he was racist. And I'm able to separate the two. Like he made great books, but, you know, he was a racist person. Like, so I'm, I'm able to separate that and be like, okay, he was a complete asshole. Like, you know, I don't agree with a lot of his thoughts, but his literature was really good. Like he writes really well. And, you know, in the case of Aziz, um, Aziz, the, Aziz um, <laughs> yeah, however you say it, his, you know, his um, Master of None is a great Netflix show. Like it's one of the shows that I love on, you know, the network and everything. Um, so I, I don't feel like his that show should just be in jeopardy now, like just because this happened. Now, if if it happened, like the woman said, you know, that's bad of him. You know, he should be more considerate, especially because he has a book called Modern Romance. You know, you, you'd think that he would be a bit more romantic and considerate to, to women when he goes on a date with them. Um, so I don't know how true it is. You know, it could be false. It could be, you know. Uh, we don't know. We don't know all the facts yet. You know, we're just, it's just speculation, it's allegations and stuff. But yeah, I think people should be able to separate the two on some level, you know, until we have facts and until there's like, you know, at least like a trial or some sort of, you know, um, settlement between the two parties. Like, I think we should be able to separate the claims from the actual work that's being produced. 
Um, but how do you guys feel about that? Uh, that That's something that, you know, I kind of agree. I do feel like there's a witch hunt. So you can easily say, you know, back in 2003, Aziz pinched my butt and there's going to be like this outcry and basically this huge, you know, wanting to tear down this person in their career. And I do believe that you have to wait for facts to come out. But I do also believe that if it's something that a whole community is saying against that person, for example, the Kevin Spacey situation, where there are children that are involved that he has been allegedly you know, molesting, that there is something that you have to say no and you have to put it on pause at least. So I don't know how much waiting and how much facts it is that you're looking for. Now, if you're looking for like DNA swabs and that type of evidence, you know, that I can understand right away, but it takes a while for that to happen. So while I do believe that a lot of these claims and allegations against certain people are, you know, a little bit, they're going after these people a little too much and it may be a, a witch hunt. And if they're basically hunting down any man that they can find, I do think that there should be some type of acknowledgement to the claims that are being made. And maybe everything should be put, put on pause for the moment. Yeah, um, I, I do want to add that in the case of Kevin Spacey, I fully understand that because that was like multiple claims, I believe, and it involved, you know, someone who was a minor at the time. So I understand there that. Also, there are also huge cover-ups. There's situations where Danny Masterson, who is on Netflix, The Ranch, it took forever for Netflix to say anything about or even to take him off the air. And they had proof they had cases dating back years and years ago where people went to the police now in his case he was involved in scientology and scientology they was able to pay off a lot of people and to sweep certain things under the rug and to intimidate folks you have harvey weinstein for example where he actually used russian officials like as to discredit people so that their cases wouldn't be heard. And that was ongoing. Rose McGowan gives a very detailed interview about that. And so do other women. So at the same time, it's it's I can't say that we should just, you know, wait and see what type of evidence that we can find because there are evidences that is out there that have been covered up. So it's it's really iffy for me. Some 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 very good thoughts. I, I do have something to say also, but uh, Mr. Lugo, I'm gonna let you go next. Uh, speak yeah. on the subject. Yeah, sure. Because I have a, a number of thoughts about this, and it's gonna tie in directly into what we talk about next with, with some of the other news that we're gonna touch on. And I think I could speak a little bit about this because I've actually had friends that have been involved with this type of thing that have been reported in the new in the news. You know, have been victims of sexual harassment, sexual assault, etc. And we'll get to that in just a bit. The reason why I only partially agree with what Gary's saying is because it, it's a much more complex issue than what a lot of people make it out to be. It's not as black and white, even though there are instances where there's complete uh there's complete guilt there's complete amount of evidence of guilt of people who have done things that have been terrible that have been like horrible and they should pay for that where i think i don't agree with, so much with gary with on um, separating the person from the art form is because especially in entertainment especially in movies and tv uh, comedy, et cetera, you're, you're, you're kind of relating to that person. You're making some sort of connection to that person through their art form. And you're always going to associate that person, that individual, whatever it is that's going on with their lives, with their art, because they put themselves out there. They put themselves as a person, even though they play on a character. So in the case of like the Kevin Spacey stuff, it's going to be very hard for people to watch house of cards with that back in the, in their back of their heads, you know, especially if it involves children and stuff, people feel a certain way about that. And I don't blame them. I think it also is telling now because because we live in an environment, especially now after the Harvey Weinstein stuff, which is after all the political stuff that's happened with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and all those emotions that have really kind of culminated into where we're at now. Uh, there seems to be a lot of bandwagoning and a lot of uh, fads going around, or at least a big fad going around with, with stuff that's happening with all these things appearing in the news, which I think a lot of the people that have done terrible things over the years should pay for what they've done, that they should be exposed. And, 
you know, they should, they should be justice served to a lot of the people that have been affected by that. At the same time, though, we can't ignore the fact that there's been a lot of people that have been capitalizing on this uh, tidal wave of emotion and tidal wave of stuff that's been going on that have also affected a lot of people that haven't done anything wrong. Fun fact, okay, even though it's not in relation to entertainment or anything, there was a, a court case and a, and a story that broke out, I want to say about a week or so ago for around the new year, where a guy was accused of sexual harassment or even a sexual assault. And it ended up being that the girl and their attorneys were lying, that they doctored, they, they doctored and edited a lot of the stuff that was involving text messages and Facebook messages. And the guy lost two years out of his life and he swore up and down. He didn't do nothing wrong until not only a family relative and some other people looked really much more into some of the original material of stuff that was passed around that was submitted as evidence and found out that there was a lot of stuff that was going on that the the person that was claiming sexual assault the victim the the woman that had claimed all that stuff was lying so it, that's not always the case and that's not always the thing but let's not start going into this mentality of you know of, of, of everybody's being guilty until proven innocent. And I think that's a very dangerous line to walk on because people feel a certain way about this. And a lot of people are always quick to on social media and other places to say that that's victim blaming that are saying that you have to merely not believe the victim because of all these years and all these things that have happened throughout all this time where things have gone down and people have just ignored them. I don't think that's an application to every single instance of this going down. Again, it's a very complex issue and it's very nuanced. And a lot of people don't like getting into nuanced discussion. Uh, like I mentioned before, I've had people that have been involved with this type of thing where they have almost been outright ignored. And again, I'll touch on that a little bit later. But again, we still have to take things on a case-by-case -case basis. We still have to look at facts. We have to look at evidence. We have to look at things that have actually happened that could be proven in a court of law. So that way the people that have done wrong can serve their time and could be given their punishment and actually their just desserts for, for the victims and for all the other people affected. But at the same time, not condemn people just for the simple fact of just he said, she said, and hearsay by random people or the court of public opinion, which I think is the most dangerous part of this right now. The court of public opinion in relation to all these sexual uh, harassment and sexual assault and rape allegations in both the entertainment industry, now the gaming industry and other industries out there, tech and all this stuff has been the most condemning factor to people, even if they've never been uh, convicted of the stuff that they've done, because no matter what, all these other people, just because you have that associated with your name is always going to be associated with you and it's always going to follow around, uh, follow you around. And in most instances, is going to kill your career no matter what it is. And I think that sucks for the people that have been, uh, what is it, been put into that same circle with the Harvey Weinsteins, with the, what is it, with the Kevin Spaceys, with the Louis CKs and all this other stuff. And yet they've never really done something like that. So again, Take it by a case-by-case -case basis. Understand that it's very complex, very complicated. And rather than have a mom mentality or a sheep mentality or a scorched earth mentality of everything that's going on, at least take everything on a case-by-case -case basis. Hey, very well put. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah, very well put. A lot of, lot of very great stuff said across the board. I don't really have anything else to add to that. Uh, but I just, one question though. Sure. Uh, are we really able to separate the person from, say, the allegation? No. I mean, because so. honestly, right. So that to me, it makes it even harder of a decision of whether or not this person should have everything stripped away from them. Even if it's something where you can never actually prove the allegation, because they never technically proved Kevin Spacey, and he's we never seen from him again. That's my point, though. That's the court of public opinion. That's what I'm saying. It's so dangerous now, especially now in these days and in the wake of Harvey Weinstein and how it's been so publicized and been so talked about. It's been so put out there. There's been movements, uh, again, at the Golden Globes, at the Grammys, I think it is, and all these other places. That's what makes it so dangerous, you know, even though it's for a good cause. It's obviously to stop you know, terrible behavior in all these industries. Still, the court of public opinion, when it's applied to a mass wide, broad stroke across everybody it could be a very condemning and damning thing again for even for people that have never done anything wrong but just being associated with that automatically makes you guilty to proven innocent and i think that's wrong and it should be wrong because again if they've never if you've never really done anything it could be proven in a court of law that you haven't done anything it could be there's evidence there's facts out there at the same time there, there's the reverse of that if you have done something it's going to come to light no matter what these people do even harvey weinstein like you mentioned before did all these different things settlements and all this stuff to really kind of prevent him from receiving any sort of repercussions eventually this shit's going to come out and they're going to get their just desserts like that but 
having that court of public opinion where it's everybody on social media with the with the sound clips with the 140 240 characters uh out there just constantly just berating you and constantly just labeling you such and such even though you weren't that that's where the problem lies i think um i think a lot of this is completely situational as well like in the case of kevin spacey and harvey weinstein that all the like you can look at the number of alle allocation um Sorry, I can't talk right now. The, <laughs> the the number of accusations that came out, you know, and the the like their response to it, you know, whatever their response was to the situation, you can look at that and see that there's something to it. Like there's something truthful there. But in other cases, sometimes it's just, you know, one person comes out and claims something and we don't know whether it's really the truth or not because you know, there's, I mean, this situation in particular that we're talking about is very new. So there hasn't really been a response yet or anything like that to it. But um, I do have one other, you know, example, um, Nelly, you know, who's like a, a, a famous rapper and everything. Um, a lady came out and made accusations against him. And then she later dropped, you know, the charges and accusations. And then Nelly actually countersued her. And now that, you know, like you guys said earlier, that's going to be attached to his name now, but I'm not going to stop listening to Nelly music. Like he's got two songs that I really like, and I'm not, I'm not going to stop listening to him now because of that, because nothing was proved there. Um, So like my argument was like, I think before we, you know, look at their work and start, you know, judging it based off their, you know, real world, real world actions, we should at least wait for some sort of settlement or for some more evidence to come out that, you know, that is actually the case. Like if, um, if as is comes out with a statement and he owns up to it, then I'm going to look at him a, a bit differently because he does have a book called modern romance. And a lot of those episodes, you know, in master of none relates to dating and stuff. So I'm definitely going to look at it differently if it comes out and this is true. But um, I can't, you know, really, uh, I'm not going to change my opinion until there's actually some more, you know, evidence to support what's been said. Well, hey, uh, good. Hey, well, good, good thoughts. I, I had some stuff I was going to say. I, I'm going to wait now as we get into this, to this topic, obviously, the next topic. Oh, and one more thing real quick. Sorry. They just yeah. greenlit. Expendables four, so yay! Oh no, that's not good news. <laughs> <laughs> All Wait, right, so well, they, they greenlit both three and four, or was uh, three was already greenlit? They everything is all greenlit, all of it. Nice. Because remember, it was in in regards to the previous story. Remember all the sexual allegations that came up against um, Stallone. Yeah. So everything was put on pause, but they found it to be, you know, not true or they couldn't find enough evidence. So the movie is back back on track and it will have Jason Statham and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Dolph Lundgren and Terry Crews, Mel Gibson, Wesley Snipes, Ronda Rousey. Let's go. And, and <laughs> Let's go. How many, uh, how many more washed up people are out there? Yeah, a bunch. And their tagline is, we are the shadows and the smoke, we rise. We are the ghosts that hide in the night. So that's what you can expect coming. <laughs> Interesting. I got uh, no problem with this whatsoever. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. We'll be looking forward to that for the, for the, for the people that are out there that are actually fans. They can look forward to that.